we're so excited to have um, this opportunity today, and we're so excited to see the special guests who are here joining us. And I just want to acknowledge them really quickly, just with a quick stand and a wave. Um, school board members who are, who are here, will you kind of sta stand and let us see you? Also, we have um, the superintendent of Shelby County Schools, Mr. Dorsey Hobson. Y'all give it up for him. I do believe we have some commissioners, uh, Shelby County commissioners here. Is that correct? Will you stand? Yes. And any other elected officials, I don't want to miss anyone. Will you please stand as well? City Council, thank you. Okay, and state representative. I'm sorry, the mic is going. I'm sorry. We also have a state representative in the house as well, correct? Yes, thank you. I'm just uh, 25 years old, but if I don't have my glasses on, I'll miss somebody. <laughs> but I'm just 25, right? Right. I have a lot of witnesses over here. They're on my side. <laughs> So at this time, we're not going to prolong the program anymore. We want you to um, feel welcome. And we want to also bring up Chief Reginald Porter, and he's going to carry us further. Good morning, everybody. Wow, that sounds pretty good. Let's try it again, though. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Well, I'm not a, a BTW warrior. I'm a central warrior. But I feel like I'm part of – I was waiting on that. I was waiting on that. But I feel like a part of BTW because my mother actually is an alum of BTW. She's very proud of you guys. Um, there are a lot of schools in Shelby County, a lot. And when Cigna first uh, approached us about the opportunity for Magic to come to a school, Superintendent Hobson sat down and mulled around for a little while. It didn't take him too long, though. First school came out of his mouth, BTW. So that says a lot. You guys are doing a lot. You've had the president here. And, and now you have the former president of the NBA. He's here today. And I don't have a mic, so I'm at the screen. But uh, without further ado, we're going to have some remarks from a couple of our um, SES representatives. We're going to have Superintendent Dorsey Hobson come up first and give his remarks, and then we'll be followed by Board Chair Teresa Jones. Good morning. Good morning. Let me just first of all say um, I'm so excited to be here. Um, you all were so proud of BTW. You know, we often hear all these stories about what's wrong with our students, what's wrong with public education, and you all represent what's absolutely right. So can you all give yourselves a big round of applause? <laughs> Let me just also take a, a, a quick quick moment to get this microphone right. <laughs> Want to again acknowledge all of our elected officials here, our school board here. Uh, this is a special time and a special place. But I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge our wonderful and hardworking teachers. If you're a teacher, would you raise your hand? Now, now, let me say this, that was a good round of applause, but these folks are on the front lines fighting for you each and every day. They don't get the credit they deserve, so can you clap for them like the Grizzlies just won the championship? And last but not, not least, can we give that uh, extraordinary school leader slash principal, Alicia Connor, a big round of applause. <laughs> what we know without a shadow of a doubt is that there is not a great school without a great school leader. You all have, you all have one of the best ones that we have, so we appreciate uh, Alicia Connor. I just want to say for a few minutes, because they told me I can only talk for a couple seconds or I talk on and on and on. Um, this place, again, is a special place. Um, People will often cite you all and you all's community as the poor community and the community with all the crime, the bad, this, that, and other, but you all are the future. 
you all have the opportunity to turn all of that around. And when I look out, I see nothing but greatness that is deep inside each and every one of you all. All you have to do is work hard and believe in yourself and you can do anything. And the best example of that is Magic Johnson who is here today. He's gonna probably tell you he didn't come from a lot of money, but he worked hard, he worked smart, had an extraordinary NBA career, but more importantly has now turned himself into a, a, a business tycoon. And that comes from working hard, that comes from believing in yourself, and that comes from dedication. So we wanna thank him for coming here and sharing his generosity with this school and with the school district. We wanna thank Magic Johnson Foundation. We wanna thank Cigna uh, for not just talking the talk, but walking the walk and putting his money where his mouth is. So thank you for today. Thank you all for your attentiveness and we wanna thank uh, Magic Johnson and uh, Cigna for being here. Thank you all. The, the next person who's coming up, just to put things in perspective, Superintendent is the boss of all the teachers, all the principals, myself, right? Y'all know that, right? Well, he also has a boss. He has nine of them. Some of them are called, are sitting down in front, they're board members, some of them up here. But Teresa's the big boss. She's the boss of the boss. So please give a round of applause for Ms. Teresa Jones. Thank you. Thank you, Chief, for that introduction. Um, I don't see myself as a boss, I see myself as us working together collaboratively to make things like this happen throughout the district and to make decisions that really, really have an impact on each student's life. But uh, I'm here today on behalf of the uh, board, my board colleagues. I want to extend greetings from them and I want to thank Mr. Johnson and the Magic Johnson Foundation for this generous endowment to the Booker T. Washington High School. This type of gift embodies the commitment that this foundation has in empowering our local communities. And when I look around this room and I can just feel the energy, I can feel the excitement, I, 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 the pride, and I know that this school is proud of what we're doing here today and the accomplishments in, in terms of this endowment. So um, I really do think that with these scholarships, the Booker T. Washington graduates are gonna have an opportunity to take their dreams, their aspirations, and all of their hopes to just amazing heights. So I challenge you for that, and I'll just say, I was talking to some of the me members of the female uh, the basketball team, and I asked about the record, and I asked one young lady if she was a st starter, and she said, no, I'm not a starter. I told her, I said, baby, don't worry about that. I said, I played basketball in high school and college. I never was on the first string, but I had fun. And I said, hit the books. Your academics are the most important things, but have fun with basketball. So to Pr Principal Kiner and the warriors of the Booker T. Washington High School, congratulations on this momentous occasion. You've shown us once again that you, you are the top, you lead, and others follow. Thank you. I would like for the people from Cigna to please stand up and give you a round of applause as well. <laughs> now, I said BTW was very special. And you're special because you got all of the bosses coming. You've got the boss from Shelby County Schools. You've got his boss. Uh, but the boss of Cigna is here specifically. I'm going to bring him on stage right now to give remarks and introduce our special guest today. President of Cigna, Mr. Mike Triplett. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Good morning Booker T. Washington. How's it going? All right. Look, uh, it is my pleasure uh, and always an honor to uh, introduce our special guest today. So let me tell you a little about him, and then we'll bring him out, and uh, he'll have several remarks for you. 
So he is considered one of the greatest and most versatile athletes in the history of American and international sports. And he's really one of the most recognized individuals around the world today. His story of perseverance and pursuit of excellence is as good as it gets. And as a teenager, he began cultivating a phenomenal work ethic that would propel him to the highest levels of athletic and business achievement. In high school, he led his high school basketball team to a 27-1 record and then an overtime victory in the Michigan State Championship. Uh, he went to college at Michigan State uh, University where he majored in communications. And during his sophomore year, he led the Spartans, and the Spartans are playing this evening, uh, he led the Spartans to a victory over Indiana State. Uh, some of you may remember that was the game where he started that battle against Mr. Larry Bird. Uh, he was also voted the most valuable player uh, of the Final Four that year. Now, during his 13-year NBA career, he led the Los Angeles Lakers to five NBA championships and to nine final uh, appearances. He won the Most Valuable Player Award in the NBA three times, and he also won the Finals uh, MVP Award three times. He's a 12-time NBA All-Star, and he is a nine-time member of the NBA All-First Team. In 1996, he was voted one of the 50 greatest players in the history of the league, and in 2007, he was voted by ESPN the greatest point guard to ever play the game. Now, he's also represented the United States of America with pride and honor, participating in the uh, Barcelona-Spain games as a member of the Olympic basketball team. Many of you may remember that was the dream team, and as Magic would say, it was the only dream team that was ever created. He finished his career in the NBA with over 17,000 points, averaging 20 points per game, 11 assists, and 7 rebounds. And then finally in 2002, he was inducted into the NBA Hall of Fame, which is the highest honor that can be bestowed upon a basketball player. Now, since his retirement, he has been extremely busy, and he is currently president and CEO of Magic Johnson Enterprises, which is a company that has a net worth of over $1 billion. His business portfolio includes the 24-hour Magic Fitness Clubs, uh, Canyon Johnson, which is a billion-dollar real estate fund, Yakaipa Johnson, which is a half a billion-dollar private equity fund, and he has a company called Workforce Solutions, which is a company that connects employers of today really with the workforce of tomorrow. Additionally, he has a food services company where he partners with Sodexo, uh, and they have over 20 major accounts in the United States, uh, including Disney, American Airlines, and Toyota. Magic Johnson Airport Holdings, which is a partnership with Hudson News operating concessions at the Los Angeles Airport. He also has a strategic alliance with Best Buy and the Capital Assist Fund, which focuses on providing debt financing for middle market companies. Also, Detroit Venture Partners, which is a capital uh, assist firm uh, for investing in technology companies in the Detroit area. And as you think about education, a strategic alliance with Edison Learning aimed at improving education really across the United States. He also has a partnership with Vibe Holdings, which is a leading multicultural company uh, consisting of Vibe Magazine, Uptown Magazine, and Soul Train brands. And he's extremely involved in the community through the Magic Johnson Foundation, and today has over 150 students on scholarship through the Taylor Michael Scholarship Foundation with 18 technology and endowment centers really throughout the United States. So with a presence in 22 cities and 22 states, sorry, and over 100 cities, he is committed to bringing businesses and jobs to underserved communities across the U.S. In 2012, he launched a cable television channel called Aspire. Aspire reaches only over 40 million uh, homes today. And you may remember about three years ago, uh, he led an investment group uh, and partnered with uh, some very influential folks to spend $2.2 billion to acquire the Los Angeles Dodgers. 
When you think about his other sports franchises, they acquired the WNBA's uh, Los Angeles Sparks of the WNBA, and they also purchased the first Major League Soccer expansion franchise in Los Angeles. So it's always my honor and devout pleasure to bring to you Mr. Irvin Magic Johnson. Hello. Okay. God is so good. God is so good. It's a blessing for me to be here and be at this incredible high school, Booker T. Washington, knowing that you got a great principal. Let's clap for her. She's done a wonderful job. <laughs> Superintendent is awesome. You have the school board here, you have county officials here, you have city council members here, and they all care about you. Now, take me back 40, 45 years ago, I didn't have that resume. I was just like you. I grew up with six sisters, three brothers. My father worked two jobs to put food on the table. My mother worked at a school just like this in the cafeteria, serving lunch to people like yourselves. And I didn't have any money to go to the movies. And at that time, Dr. J's was the shoe that everybody wanted. I couldn't buy no Dr. J. I had to go to a store called Woolworth and buy a 99 cent special tennis shoes. Yeah, that's what I was in. I had one suit to wear to church and two pair of pants to wear to school, rotating them every other day. Sometimes we may had the peanut butter, but we didn't have the jelly. Sometimes we had sugar and the water, but we didn't have Kool-Aid. We were drinking out of mason jars. Everybody remember the big mason jars back in the day. Sometimes we had the corn flakes, but we had to deal with water. Forget some milk. That's how poor we were. But the main thing I didn't have was poor drink. And all of you, no matter what your situation, and I'm going to ask all the teachers, and they're doing a wonderful job, to just move on back. Go ahead. I got them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to hang. That way you can sit down and take a break. And let's clap for your teachers, too. They do a wonderful job. <laughs> yeah. See, it's not about how much money you have or your parents have. First, you got to love yourself. Then you got to say, you know what? I can do some great things here at high school and then beyond. But at first, I got to believe that I can do it. I was the first one out of 10 kids to go to college. My parents didn't go. And so I set the tone for my sisters and brothers. And then they followed me. You may be the first in your family to achieve that goal. But believe that you can do it. And then your life is about the choices that you make. Right? Because you can choose to do something or not do it. When you know you're supposed to be doing your homework, you got to do it. And then you can go hang out. Then you can get on your telephone. Then you can start playing your games that you play. You know that if I turn left down that street, you know what's waiting on you. You know that. So you know you shouldn't turn left. I, I, ooh. 
I knew the drug dealers in my community. I knew the alleys I couldn't go down. So I didn't go down those places. And I didn't get in trouble by dealing with those people. So we know where the trouble lies. We know the gang members. We know all of that. So you got to make good choices for yourself. Now, a lot of us may not want to go to college. Then go to trade school and get a trade so you can be successful still in life. That's okay. Because what you want to do is be able to take care of yourself and your family one day. Uh-oh. Is that me? Is it, am I okay? Okay. Um, so what I tried to do was just make the right choices in life. And then I outwork people to get to where I am. You got the basketball team right here. All I did was hoop and went home. That's it. Hoop, went home, did my, my lesson that I had to take care of for school, and I went home. And I wanted to make sure I was the best that I could be in basketball. When my boys were going to hang out at the park, I was hooping. I was hooping. Because if you want to be great, you got to put the time into it. Anything that you want to do, you got to put the time into it. And then it will come back to you. Now, every time I wanted to do something in life, I had to have a little hustle. So my father said, okay, you want some money to go to the movie? There's the lawnmower. There's the rake. Okay. Mm hmm pointing at me to do what? Change? We're going to be all right. Hello. There we go. Okay. Hello. 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 All right. We all right. We're all right. <laughs> That's okay. We good. We good. You know, you always have to adapt and adjust. That's what we're going to do. You know, we from the hood. We got common sense when we're from the hood, right? That's all. We just adapt and adjust. Because <clears throat> the thing that I want you to have is a great book sense great intelligence when it comes to high school, but also have great common sense. And if you put, the both, if you put both together, you're going to be incredible and you're going to do some incredible things. Now, who would ever thought that the kid from Lansing, Michigan, grew up on the west side of town, that he would go on, play for the Lakers, do all that stuff. So forget about that. But because of my college background and because of my common sense where I grew up in the hood, that I, I was able to parlay that into being a businessman. Now, you look at me. I'm the first and only person to ever own Starbucks, right, outside of Starbucks. I built 125 Starbucks. The kid from the ghetto that once was at the ninth gr in, in the ninth grade, but I was reading at the seventh grade level. Mm, yeah, you thought I didn't have problems. Yeah, my counselor pulled me aside and said, Irvin, you are reading at the seventh grade level, and you are in the ninth grade. So we got to go to summer school to correct that problem. And you got to take reading courses while you are in school to correct that problem. So I didn't get mad. I didn't worry about what my friends would say. I went on to correct that problem. So if you need help, make sure you reach out to your counselor, to your teacher, and get the help that you need. 
to be successful. And then don't worry about what your friends are going to say. See, because sometimes peer pressure is what gets us in trouble. But if they're your real friends, they will support you. They will support your decision to be smarter. And let me tell you something. It is cool to be smart. It is cool to be smart. Okay? It is cool to be smart because you can do both. You can be down. You can hang out. You can do all that and still be smart at the same time. So if your friends don't su support your decision, then maybe they're not your real and true friends. You know. So remember that. So here I am, a guy just like you, grew up the same way. I wanted to change my life. I didn't want to stay poor my whole life. I wanted to do something not only for myself, but for my parents who worked so hard to raise 10 kids. And you can do the same thing. It might not be what I do. It might be what they do. You turn this way, it might be what some of them do. You got positive role models sitting in this auditorium right now. It might be what, you might be a teacher one day. You have to decide what it is that you're passionate about and go after that. But remember, you can achieve and you can do it. No matter what your zip code is or area code is. Because I'm living proof of that. Now, I'm going to tell you a quick story and then we're going to get into some questions. My friend, he's a point guard on a basketball team. He called me and said, man, I'm going to see my girl. She, was, she lived about 20, 25 minutes from our houses. And I said, man, no, I can't go tonight. Because she had a girlfriend that lived next door to her who liked me. So I was supposed to be going. But I had some homework to do. So I didn't go. He went to see the girl, and as he was coming home, a drunken driver ran a red light and killed him. And I was saying, man, I had went every single time. That was the first time I didn't go. So God must have been looking out for me. And because I made that commitment to do my homework, and I was at home, I'm still here. So I decided, man, I'm going to dedicate my life to helping people who look like me. No matter what I have accomplished, I want to come back and make sure I tell young people like yourselves that you can do anything in life you want. If you love Jay-Z, you can become Jay-Z, but... You have to educate yourself. If you love Lil Wayne, you can become Lil Wayne. But it has to be through education. Now, did they think they were going to be who they are today? No, but they worked hard. And you can do the same thing. You can do the same thing. You just got to believe in yourself and then take advantage of your opportunity here while you're in school. So important. And these teachers have dedicated their lives to helping you out. If that teacher and my counselor didn't pull me aside, I wouldn't be able to read today. And I definitely couldn't, uh, couldn't be a businessman today. And I wouldn't be standing here talking to you today. Oh, I didn't have to get on the bus, but I did. So make sure that you do every everything necessary for you to be able to go on to college and achieve your goals and dreams or go get a trade. All right, so let's open it up for some questions so we can have some fun. Uh, you can probably stand up for where you are if you want or raise your hand where you are and then I can answer it. I'll repeat the question because coming up here may be hard for you to get out. So whoever got the first question, even if it's an adult on that side, I'll be able to answer it too. And uh, we can have some fun now. So it could be, yes. 
Shh. What college did I attend? Um, I got recruited by, uh, by everybody. I went and visited North Carolina and Maryland, and, uh, but I end up, I wanted to stay home for my parents could see me play. Uh, so I went to Michigan State University, and I'm a mama's boy too, and I loved her fried chicken, so I wasn't moving away too, too far from that, that chicken and that sweet potato pie. I wasn't going too far from, from that. <laughs> you can believe that. And the thing that really is crazy is that, man, she taught me everything. She taught me how su to survive. She said, you get ready to go to college in a couple of years. I got to teach you how to do laundry. I got to teach you how to cook. And it was really interesting. When I got to college, I was one of the only college students that knew how to cook and cook for themselves. And then when I got to the NBA, my first rookie season, I used to cook for the Lakers. No wonder we won so many championships, <laughs> man. But, uh, yeah, she taught me how to survive. And um, I was a broke college student, too. And it was really cool. What's your name, my man? Tamari McNair. Tamari? Tamarius. Tamari is so I'm on the Michigan State campus, brother, and I saw this young lady with some jeans walk by me. So Tamari is, I had to follow the jeans because any woman that's in them jeans, I got to get to know her. <laughs> so when I ran up on her, it was my wife, Cookie, right? So I said, hey, I got to get to know you. So we exchanged numbers. And we went on break, so I didn't get a chance to talk to her because we were playing games. When we got back, I called her up and took her out on that, in that one suit that I had, which was a Robert Hall special. See, back in the day, Robert Hall's was the place you go get a suit, but it was really three suits in one. <laughs> Remember that? You reversed the jacket, and <laughs> it, it was plaid on that side, and you come back, it was black on the other side. So, oh, well, you know, I was broke, man. So I took her out in that suit, bruh, and we went, and she a brother couldn't afford nothing but a hamburger, you know. So we went, oh, man, I was broke, broke. So we went and enjoyed, and we split that burger, too, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm giving it to you real. And, shoot, I used to cut the coupons out. My mother used me. Every Sunday, we would cut the coupons out for discount or detergent and all kind of food. So when I got to college, I did that too. But anyway, that's how broke I was. But anyway, I took Cookie out, and then I said, about 12 midnight, I said, go, go home and change and put some sneakers on. So I took her to the gym because I had to see if she could rebound for me, I was going to end up marrying that girl. We stayed in there for three hours. I shot, she rebounded. That's the woman I married, see? So God is good, man, all the time. So I'm blessed. So let's open it up for some questions. And uh, Yes. So I went to Michigan State, young lady, and uh, I studied communications. And um, my freshman year, we went to the, uh, they said I couldn't, and they're going to tell you a lot. People are going to tell you you can't do something. They told me at 6'9", I could never play point guard in college. And I love proving them wrong. So I played point guard. I led our college to a Big Ten championship my first year. Kansas City came calling to draft me number one as a freshman. But I wasn't mature enough or physical, physically ready to go to the NBA. So I decided to stay. Plus, my goal and dream was to win the NCAA championship. I went back to school, and of course, Mike told you we played that blonde haired guy for the championship named Larry Bird. <laughs> we ended up beating them, and then I decided to turn pro. And I'm glad I waited, because then I got a chance to play with Kareem Abdul Jabbar and the Lakers. And uh, the run that we had, there will never be runs like that anymore. We went to the finals nine times in 12 years. That's, that's an incredible run, so we had a good time. It was somebody's hand up. Yes. Well, my major was communication, and then I minored in business. So I've always wanted to be a businessman. And what was cool was I'm a guy who, who I love knowledge. So I love to learn from people. 
And um, even today, I've learned something by coming here. And all of you can teach me things just like I can teach you guys things. And so who would ever thought that I would use my majors? Because right now, I own Aspire, and I own about 30 radio stations. So the, what I learned in college, I'm applying right now. And so it's been great. And uh, I love doing what I do. And then it was somebody, right, yes. All right. I'm sorry. Oh, great question. How many years my foundation, my foundation, excuse me, have been going? Well, we're about almost 25 years, Magic Johnson Foundation. And what we're going to do, we're going to announce with the superintendent. So you stole my glory, see? <laughs> and uh, we're going to establish with Mike, too, as well, and Cigna. Let's give it up for Cigna, because they didn't have to write the check. And Mike triple it over there. We're going to make Memphis one of our cities now that we give scholarships out to kids. So it's going to be great. <laughs> Mike and I and Cigna want to do a lot of great things here in, in Memphis, working with, of course, your great superintendent and as well as the mayor and also principals like the one you have here and the city council and the school board because we got to work with everybody and, uh, and, and the county supervisors. Did I leave anybody out? Did I cover everybody? State representative. I'm covering everybody. You know, the magic man don't leave nobody out. <laughs> inclusion, inclusion. Um, and so we, we have 150 kids on scholarship all the way from New York to Atlanta, Chicago, Michigan, Texas. Um, who am I leaving out? Probably a few states I'm leaving out. So you can apply, and what we do, we not only give you a check, but we fly you out to L.A. every year and have college boot camp. Uh, one of your companies that uh, right here uh, in Memphis, FedEx, they write us, they are a big supporter of our foundation, and so, uh, and Cigna. So we all work together to try to make sure we can help you go to college, and uh, that's what it's all about. And we give you a laptop, we give you a, a printer and uh, stay with you. And then we also help you get a job internship because that's very important. <laughs> All right. Who was one of my, oh, one of the best players I played against in the NBA? Well, that, let, me, let me, it was two of them. The first one I'm going to tell you is Michael Jordan. Let me get on the stage for the. <clears throat> yeah. So MJ w was involved in two or three of the greatest shots I've ever been involved with playing against anybody. First, I got to tell you about the first guy, and that was Dr. J. So the dude had this big fro. So he had jumped out of bounds, right? And he's floating, and the ball is in his big hand. But he began to walk in the air. <laughs> now we thinking, no way he can get to the other side walking in the air that long. It's no way. But that dude kept going, and the fro was blowing. <laughs> this dude walked in air all across the out-of-bounds line, got to the other side of the hoop, spun it against the glass, and it went in. <laughs> we were like, man, I had never seen anybody hang in air quite that long until Michael Jordan. 91 finals, he comes down, jumps in the air, tongue out. <laughs> so tongue, ball, we all jumped. Now, we think we got him. We know we got him, right? So all of a sudden, he just hold on to the ball and waited till we went down. And he looked at us, too. <laughs> so we went down to the ground. He switched it to the left hand. Wait a minute. He and air that long, switched it. Tongue went to the left side. <laughs> Spun it against the glass and good. 
So Michael Cooper and I, we didn't know what to do. We should, should we ask him to do it again? <laughs> How can a man hang in air that long and then have the presence of mind to say, I'm going to switch it to my left hand in mid-air? Then one time he came up to me at half court. He said, MJ, come here, because we call each other MJ. So I said, what's up, man? We getting ready to play. He said, tell your teammate Byron Scott, I'm about to score 50 on him. <laughs> and guess what happened? <laughs> score 50. So when he hit that last one to score 50, he looked at me. <laughs> what did I tell you? <laughs> the man was incredible. But you know what? I got some Michael Jordans in here if they believe in themselves. You know, you have to believe that you can do great things yourself. You got to believe that you can, and then you will, for sure. So then Larry Bird, him and Michael talked more trash than any player I've ever played against, but they backed it up. So I'm the first line of defense, right? So. My job was to stop the point guard, so I stopped the ball. And then he went over, DJ passes to Larry Bird in the corner. So my second job was to close Larry Bird out. So I'm running out at him, and he's talking trash to me while I'm running out at him. I don't know why you're running out here. <laughs> I'm going to let you get one step away from me, then I'm going to shoot it in your face. So sure enough, I step. You know, I go to do this, he shoots it, all net, and then he tells me, you ran all the way out here for nothing. <laughs> Who does that? So these guys were the best I've ever played against, and I'll tell you why. They made their teammates better. They would do everything they had to do to win. Make the pass, make the shot, get the rebound, play defense. So those were the two guys, and also the two teams, because it's about team. All right, let's go to the next one. Yes, and then we'll come over here. How did I get the nickname Magic? Well, when I grew up, high school didn't start to the 10th grade. Now it's different. So I went to a high school that was not known for basketball. Actually, I got bust across town. So I stayed in the all-black neighborhood in Lansing, Michigan. Busick had just come in. And then the high school that was two blocks from my house was known for basketball. It was a powerhouse in the state of Michigan. And I thought I was going to continue that tradition. I grew up watching all the players. I went to all the games, just like Booker T. Washington. You know, you want to be a part of the tradition. And I could walk to the school. And... Bussing came in, said, mm, nope. So something happened to me, though, that was interesting. We got there for the first two weeks. They didn't want us there. We didn't want to be there. So there was a lot of fighting going on. The third week, the principal met our bus uh, as we pulled up. And he said, Irvin Johnson, I want to talk to you. So I went to his office, and he said, you have got to stop the blacks from fighting. You asking me at 15 to stop the juniors and seniors from fighting. Okay. And then he had a football player who was white. You're going to stop the white students from fighting. And I got them all set up in the auditorium waiting on you. So I didn't know, man, I'm, I'm 15 years old. I'm like, what am I going to say to them to make them stop fighting? I don't know what happened. God just helped me deliver a message. But you know what? That's what happened. We stopped fighting. That day, that moment, that time, I became a leader. Didn't know it, but uh, that's what happened. So that school was picked to come in last place in our division. Well, we got off to an 8-0 start, and um, we went to play the school that was supposed to win it, win the whole thing in the state. Well, we blew them out on their home court. 
And that 15-year-old guy named Irvin Johnson had 36 points, 16 rebounds, and 16 assists. That was my first triple-double ever. <laughs> and uh, so the sports writer comes in, and he was like, man, I got to give you a nickname. Huh? And you know, at 15, you giggle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. And so the guy come in, he said, somebody's already called Dr. J, somebody's already called Big E, I want to call you Magic. So I get on the bus, and all my boys was like, I hope you think that we're not going to call you no magic, so don't even try that, you know. <laughs> and I didn't think it would stick, but here it is 40-something years later, it's still called magic. So that's how I got the nickname. Um, it was somebody, yeah. Who was my role model? Was? Well, still is. My role model my dad. That's my role model. That's my man. Yeah. <laughs> Matter of fact, when I leave you guys, he's 81. I'm going to pick him up and take him. Michigan State plays uh, Oklahoma tonight. I'm going to go grab him and my brothers, and uh, we're going to go to the tournament game. My father was my role model because he worked two jobs and, sh and taught me how to be a man, right? Um, I only dress like this because of my father. I only act like this because of my father, right? And so everything that I do is based on him. And so, now, I was blessed, right? Now, my sports role model, I had Oscar Robinson. You know, I had Wilt Chamberlain, players that played before me that I liked. And I tried to be like Oscar, big guard, handle the ball. And so, um, and then I still have great role models today and guys who I respect and admire. One of them was a guy who introduced me. Mike Triplett over there, so I'm blessed to have a good friend like that, right? <clears throat> As I get to know all these powerful and great people, we're going to do some great things together in this city, so I'll, they're going to be my role models too, and then I'm sure it's going to be some other ones over here, and then hopefully we all do some great things together. And I was a young man behind you somewhere, yes, and then we'll come to you, young man. Huh? What, what NBA player used to defend me and lock me up? Couldn't nobody ever stop me. Mm -hmm. And I, no, I'm going to tell you why. See, I wasn't about scoring. See, I, I have the highest average assist average ever in history, right? I was the only rookie to ever be named MVP of the NBA Finals, ever. Think how long the league has been going. And that's, now, as a rookie, I, was, I just turned 20. I scored 42 points, 15 rebounds, 7 assists in that championship game, right? So when you think about me, though, it's not about the points. It's about me doing this, setting my teammates up. You can't stop that. You know, as hard as Michael played against me, as hard as whoever, I could still come down and run the team. I didn't care about scoring points. I cared about the W. That's it. That's all I care about, winning. So let me take you through my resume, then you understand. I won fourth grade championship, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. I won in the 12th. I won as a sophomore. I won five NBA championships as a player. I won another five as an owner, so I got 10 championship rings from the NBA. You got it? That's what I'm about. I'm not about, <clears throat> so, see, a guy who just scored, you can stop him. But I was a guy who did a rebound, did this, I did that, and that's all I cared about. So wh if you ask me who gave me the hardest time, it would be guys like Michael. Uh, it would be Nate McMillan was a great defensive guard, Alvin Robinson. Um, but I've I got to tell you a quick story. George Gervin was one of my heroes. I love George Gervin. He, matter of fact, I brought a lot of NBA players to Memphis before you had the Grizzlies when Penny Hardaway was the man of this town. It still is. <laughs> I brought NBA players to play against him and all the Memphis great players that you've had at the University of Memphis. I mean, you've had some incredible players here. And we played that game three, three times. We sold it out every night. It was incredible. We had so much fun, right? And I brought George Gervin 
uh, Dominique Wilkins, uh, Isaiah Thomas, a lot of those guys here. But anyway, um, my rookie season, I'm playing my first three games. And World Be Free hit 46 points on me. Damn, I said, man, I can't play defense. The next night, Paul Westfall scored 38 points on me, right? But here come the Iceman. It's my third game. So he comes across the middle, and he finger rolls, right? And it goes, swish. So our crowd went crazy because Iceman could finger roll like nobody else. So I went up to him, and at that time, he had just scored his 44th point on me. And he came and hugged me and said, young fella, young fella, <laughs> don't you worry. I do this to everybody. <laughs> so the reason I'm telling you that is because nobody can, it's hard to stop somebody in the NBA at that level. You know what I'm saying? Like if you came, you're going to score on somebody. It's because everybody's talent is just great. You made it to the NBA for a reason. So I think people can give you a hard time, but they can't actually stop you. Okay, so let me, yeah, and then I'll move back there. Okay, I see you. Go ahead. Great question. What's the best choice I ever made in my life? Wow. I think uh, I would have to say, I'm glad I didn't transfer from that high school. Learned a lot. I'm glad I chose Michigan State because everybody said, no way I could turn them into a champion. And I love proving people wrong. But I want to, my brother knows this. I want to take you back to the, my high school. So we had security just like you have security here. I'm black, the guy's white. So he tells me as I'm, my, after my first year, so I'm hooping pretty good. So he says, you're going to amount to nothing like everybody else. So I, that registered with me. So I said, okay. Got the scholarship to Michigan State. My first year on that campus, I had a three point. I was so happy about that, right? My grades were solid. I'm playing basketball. We're playing great. Went on second year win the championship, I get drafted by the Lakers. So I drove my car back to that high school. <laughs> and I parked on the lawn to make him come out. <laughs> so as he come out, I get out the car and I said, the only reason I did this was to make you come out and let you see that I have become something. And I made something out of my life. So I didn't cuss him out. I didn't do nothing crazy. I just got out, let him see me that I have achieved. And guess what? There's some people thinking that you can't achieve, but you're going to prove them wrong. You know, just believe in yourself and then take care of business and make the right choices. That's all I'm talking about. Make the right choices. It was somebody back here. Oh, that was you. Okay, go ahead. And then I get you, young lady. Okay. Huh? Oh, man, man, I was so nervous playing my first NBA game. And I'm going to tell you what happened. And I don't think nobody knows this. They didn't put this in the NBA bloopers. So here I am. <laughs> I'm a rookie, and I'm leading the team out, right? So I come out on the court, and I'm leading the team out. But I'm so nervous, I step on my warm-up pants, and I fall and roll over. <laughs> And when I stopped rolling over, all my teammates were standing on me just laughing. That's how nervous I was. And um, thank God, you know, I had, a, I had a decent game, not a great game, but Kareem bailed us out at the end. You know, he hit a sky hook from the free throw line to win the game for us, my first NBA game. But um, I cried, man, when they drafted me. And... They brought me my jersey in the, in the Laker locker room because I thought of all of those times back in Lansing, Michigan when I played shirts and skins and I was a little kid, you know, hoping and wishing that I could make it to the NBA. And then I was able to do that. Uh, it was the greatest day of my life. But then the, 
I said, man, there's other great things for me to do. And so when I became a businessman and got my first business, I cried just as much as I did when I was drafted by the Lakers. And then when we established the Magic Johnson Foundation, the same situation. So I keep reinventing myself to try to, you know, keep going on. What's next for me to do? So today, coming here, it, it was emotional for me, a great moment for me, because I remember all the time. I've been in Memphis a long time and doing a lot of great things here, and I'm looking forward to coming back and doing other things. So that's what it's all about. So it's the last question, the young lady. I think that was you, right? Yeah. Oh, that's right. I said I was going to take both of you. So let me start with her because I did promise her. There you go. Go ahead. Do I still play basketball in my free time? I really don't play that much anymore. I get up every morning at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I'm in the gym by 5. I do an hour of cardio, and then I lift weights for an hour, and then I work all day. Now, I do love basketball. I watch all the time. I watch every high school game. I watch every college game. I watch all the NBA. So I love the game of basketball, but I just don't have time to play because I am a businessman. Now, I, I play occasionally, like twice I played in the last year or two. So my daughter, my wife tells me to play my daughter one-on-one. -on -one. She's in college now. She used to be a point guard back in high school. And I don't want to play my daughter because I'm a competitive person. So, so we go to 10. I let her get to 9. That's hard for me to do, to let her get to 9. But then I crush her after that, you know. <laughs> and if I played my mom, I would let my mom get to 9 and a half. I, I, I really would. And then I would crush her too. So, you know, <laughs> it's like I'm not into losing. I love to win. But um, I don't play that much. And, uh, but I try to stay in shape. And basketball is my first love. And it's tied now with the Dodgers in baseball, you know. Uh, who would ever thought, here I am a ba basketball player and that I will own a Major League Baseball team. And uh, it's, it's, it's a great feeling to be able to represent all of you and everybody around the country. And uh, to know that Jackie Robinson was the first one to play and then I'm following following him as a uh, owner of the Dodgers. Now, it was one other young lady, and then I, I got something I want to do. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, good question. She said, when everybody get famous, they always say what they're going to do for their family. Well, remember, a lot of them don't do for their family. No, no, I'm just saying. Some of them do, and they should be doing it, not just for their family, but for their community, too. Uh, the first thing I did was bought my parents a home. And then I retired both of them. I didn't want them to work anymore. So, and even today, I still take care of my parents. I love, I love my parents. And um, they, they're, they're my heart. And so, and then it's all about making sure I stay connected to my family. My brothers and sisters are scattered all over the place. They have families. So, but it's also staying involved in the community. I'm back here because I want to be with you guys. I want to give you the tools that made me successful and pass on the information. Now, uh, I need the captain of the women's basketball team to come up here and the captain of the men's basketball team. And then it was three people that I met. It was you two and somebody else. That was you. Come on up here. Come on up. Come on up on stage. The captains. <coughs> okay. Well, Chris. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get that out. Just. All right, I bought y'all a gift. Here you go. Mm -hmm, here we go. Uh huh. I'm not playing around. See, I came here bearing gifts and everything. Uh huh. Mm -hmm, here we go. Here we go, young man. All right. And here you go. I can't hear you, Booker T. Washington. Come on, give it up for your classmates. Yep. 
So let me get in the middle. Let's see. Well, be here. All right. Uh, you know what? Let's do it like this. Come on in front right here. And you come on in front of him. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to organize it a little bit. There we go. How about that? I give it up for your classmates. Give it up for your classmates. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sue. And oh, okay, there it is. No, no, I think Kentucky is the favorite, but my Michigan State Spartans. I'm proud of the fellas, you know. And then we got a check presentation. Is you want to do it now? Okay. All right. Yes, superintendent and everybody, come on up. And well, Mike. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, you know, you got to be right here, sir. Superintendent should be right over here, too. And then Mike, you should be here. Yep, there we go. Yeah. Mike should be here. Okay. You, you want to go ahead and announce it? Okay. Hello, everybody. On behalf of the Magic Johnson Foundation and Cigna, we are uh, proud to present a $30,000 check to Booker T. Washington High School. And this will be used to further the advancement of a number of students here at the school, whether you choose to go to college, whether you choose to go to a trade school. It's just a small part of what we think we should be doing in the community, and that effort will continue. So congratulations, and thank you to the Magic Johnson Foundation. We want to say thank you the way that we say thank you over here with the 21 gun salute. Y'all ready? Yeah. One, two, ready, and. That's, that's how we say thank you. <laughs> what, uh, what, I'm sorry, Miss. You gave away several shirts, but you're gonna be leaving with some. <laughs> we need you to represent BTW. Yes. Now, if we need to change the size, let us know. Sufficient honorary warrior right here. <laughs> you, you are so blessed to have this great woman leading this school. Come on, I can't hear you. Come on, you got to stand up for your principal now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And... Hold on one second, shh, one second. I would love to have every teacher come up because I want a picture with every teacher and counselor. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Shh, come on, I want a picture with all the teachers. Come on, all the teachers. Come on, all the teachers, come on up. We not leave it here till I get a picture with all the teachers. Yep, yep. I'm going to give them to Chris.
All right, so what we're going to do, Okay, so if we can do this, can we get, let's take it in like maybe yeah, fives or tens, that way we can get everybody. So if we can get the first five people with me and your principal, five or six, and then we'll look this way and take a picture, okay? All right. All right, can we get the next five or six? Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You get to let me in. Can we need the next ones, please? You got it? You got it? Yep. Okay, next ones. Come on in. Come on in. <laughs> 